two streams of income. Hosted by best-selling author and entrepreneur, Dr. David Powers, where we discuss streams of income, passive income, residual income, and even why there are dinosaurs and zombies in this intro. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready to dive in. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Streams of Income podcast with Dr. David Powers. That's me, uh, in case you were wondering. Um, Dr. Dave, Dr. Redbeard, Dave, whatever comes to mind when you're talking about me. Uh, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I speak a lot at conferences and a lot of times people don't remember my name. And you know what, I'm perfectly fine with that because what they do remember is my branding. The big, bald, bearded, Viking looking guy. That's what people remember. And so if they don't remember my name, that's fine. They could actually probably Google the big, bald, red-bearded Viking guy that speaks at conferences, and you'll see pictures of me. So that's fine. And uh, I tend to stick out. I'm perfectly okay with that. But let me get a swig of coffee from my best dad mug, and we'll get started. All right. So a little bit of caffeine. I've already had an energy drink and half that coffee. If I'm talking fast, that's why. All right, so let's get started today. If you're seeing the screen and you're watching the YouTube version of this podcast, you're going to see that I'm on an eBay page. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to list some eBay items. Now, this is something I do a lot. We're actually going to want, that's that's a comparative thing. That's a relative thing uh, a lot. Um, it's something I do occasionally, not too very often, I guess, maybe. Um, does that really matter, though? And so I have some things for sale on eBay. Over the years, I have made a ton of money on eBay. And I'm talking from the old days before eBay was even around. I used to do Yahoo auctions. Is there anybody on here old enough to remember Yahoo auctions? That was kind of where I think it started from. I don't know if eBay bought them out or Yahoo just decided, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore. But Yahoo Auctions was where I got started. I sold items on there. From there, uh, there used to be some comic book auction websites. Uh, Wizard, an old comic book magazine called Wizard, used to have one, and I made a buttload of money on there selling comic books. That is actually how I sold my initial collection and paid for all my undergrad college was on Wizard. And so it worked out pretty well. It was a precursor to eBay. Uh, eBay was around then, but Wizard was like where everybody went for comics. And now... I mean, eBay, Amazon, everybody goes here. There are some comic websites, and I'm looking to get uh, some of those folks on here for an interview. Uh, Hip Comic is one that I do know of, and uh, if you guys happen to see this, uh, reach out. I want to get somebody on here for an interview about your site and how people can make you can add selling comic books and comic collectibles to their streams of income. So today, what we're going to do, I, you know, I would just do a live eBay listing thing. <laughs> And so what I like to do, and let me caveat that or issue a disclaimer, I do not sell a lot on eBay these days. I maybe have a couple hundred items listed on eBay right now. Very small. Um, I mainly use it for collectibles. I've got a threshold of, uh, you know, I won't sell anything on eBay if it reaches under a certain amount. And it's, it's just not worth my time because I'm not listing a lot of volume. Now, some of you, even this late in the game, have never sold on eBay. Um, and some of you, you might be younger and you're thinking, could I sell on eBay? Uh, maybe there's a few of you doing the Dave Ramsey financial peace thing and you're selling everything but the kids. And so eBay is an amazing option. So I thought I'd list a few things. And you get a taste of eBay from a small time seller shipping it from my house using recycled Amazon envelopes to ship things in. And so, you know, and matter of fact, you know what? I'll do another podcast at some point of my little shipping process. And that way, if you're a small time seller like me and you just want to do a tiny stream of income and sell some collectibles, that kind of thing, you can do that. Now, in the past, like I say, I've made a lot of money over the years on. I think the single largest item I've sold on eBay was a $2,500 comic book. Uh, that was the first appearance of Moon Knight. Uh, some of you, if you're not comic book nerds, you might know about Moon Knight from the uh, Disney series of the same name. Believe me, the comic was so much cooler. Um, the series 
tried awful hard to do it justice, but uh, I don't know. The comic was so much better. The action was so much better. But let's go ahead and dig into this, and let's do some listings. So the first item I'm going to list is an old military book. Uh, just bought this a couple weeks ago at an auction, actually at an estate sale. Um, it's a 1950 edition. Let me hold this up for the uh, YouTube viewers. 1950 edition of medical and surgical technicians. And you can see this thing is actually like loose leaf. It's not even bound anymore. Um, I'll tell you why. It's actually because of another stream of income. Uh, this book, I bought it for eight bucks. Um, had my son, uh, I pay my son uh, to do scanning. Uh, it's just a little side job for him. Well, you know what? It's a stream of income for one of my teenagers. And so I paid him to do scanning. So we actually tore this book apart. He scanned it page by page. And I'm going to turn this book into about three or four other streams of income. Um, you know what? Sitting here listening to me. Because it, it's great to live by example, especially as a parent. Be a good example to your kids. Um, how old are you now, dude? Seven. Seven. I, I've got five kids. And sometimes I forget how old they are. It's not because I'm a, an absentee parent or anything. It's because every doggone time I get all their ages right. One of them has a birthday. And then it screws up my little you know, my little uh, mantra that I have, you know? So I've got five kids from age seven all the way up to 20. And come over here, dude. You want to say hello? This is Sherlock, Sherlock Watson. And so he is named after, me and my wife named him after two of our favorite literary characters, uh, best played by Benedict Cumberbatch in the uh, Sherlock TV series, of course. But uh, let's go ahead and get onto this eBay book. You don't want to hear about all that, or maybe you do. Tell me in the comments which way you want to go with that one. So I've got a couple tabs already pulled up. And so what I do, here's what I do with military books. Amazon has gotten weird in recent years about listing military books. Mainly, I think after the uh, the war in Ukraine was when I really noticed things changing on Amazon. I think they were afraid that people were going to start uh, you know, buying military manuals and using it for guerrilla warfare, things like that. Um, and so they got really weird about listing any kind of old military books. And so I've found a workaround. There are tons of military books for sale on Amazon, but for some reason, every time I tried to list a new one, it would ban it, saying, um, I don't want to even pull it up because I don't want to trigger something. But it something about unauthorized sale of uh, classified military materials, that kind of thing. I mean, this is it's a 1950 medical manual. It's obviously not classified material, but it would pop up with every military manual I tried to list. And so the workaround I found was to search on or search on eBay. I almost said Amazon. To search on eBay, find the manual that you're wanting to list, and then at the bottom, let me show that for you. So what I did was I actually just did an eBay search for the particular manual I was looking for, which is the TM8-230. And so I found several. There's some newer editions, newer editions. Ah, there's an older one. That's the one I used. I pulled that up. And so what you'll see under these listings, it's the same one that I pulled up. And right there under the pictures on the thing, you can see have one to sell. And there's a button sell now that you can click on. Uh, click on that link and it will actually pull in a lot of the specific details, things like that. You still have to take your own pictures and everything, but it'll pull in the details and everything for you. And so that's the workaround I've found is to find one already for sale and just do sell, sell yours now. And so that's the page I'm on. So uh, let's see. Like I said, if you're on the audio version, I'm going to try to walk you through this, let you know what I'm doing. But uh, be sure to get the YouTube version as well. And that way, if you need to, if you're doing this for the first time, eBay and all that kind of stuff, um, or if you're not very new or not very experienced at it, uh, grab the YouTube version of this podcast, watch that so you can pause it and everything. And let me say before I get started, also, uh, I, I kind of skipped ahead a step or two. You do need to already have your eBay account and all that set up. So we may do that on another video, but today we're pretending like you've already got eBay set up. And most of you, even if you're not selling on eBay, you probably have an account because you've purchased on eBay. And so let's go ahead. And uh, first thing there is uh, complete your listing, add photos. And so I'm going to add some photos. And uh, let's see, there we go. I've already got them on the desktop. Let's go ahead and find the photos for the military manual. All right, so let's see. And also one of the things, oh, come on now. 
trying to get a bunch of them at one time and hit the wrong button. Don't you hate that fat thumbs effect? Um, all right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and add those and check them out. So one of the things I like to do, I like to list at least two to three uh, eBay items per week. And as a small time seller, I've found that tactic to work really well for me because what happens, I've got some things listed on eBay that have been there for a very long time. Well, you see that first photo on there, it is sideways. And so I click on that button and I can flip it around. Oh, now it's upside down. Let's keep flipping sideways again, one more time. And boom, there it is. All right. So what I was saying is I try to list two to three items a week, because what happens is it helps revive older listings. I've found that as I list more and more, for some reason, the way their algorithm works, it makes my older items pop up as well. And so usually when I list some older items, I will find almost immediately the same week that new items, uh, as I list new items, I'll find that uh, some of the old items sell. And so it's, it's just an algorithm thing there. And so, uh, you know, you just work with it, roll with it. All right, so here's one thing that I love to do with my eBay listings, and I have found that this greatly increases the sales as well, is to tell a personal story. And so in addition to the product photos, I post a couple little articles about me. And so the articles I post with almost everything, it, it's a, an old newspaper article from, I don't even know what year this was. It was in the early 2000s, maybe. Um, so I post this newspaper article that's about me owning one of, or actually the largest comic book collection in the Southeast United States, the largest privately held comic book collection in uh, this whole part of the country. And so it kind of establishes my bona fides as a collector. It makes people think, okay, this guy's on the up and up. He cares about collectibles. I feel good ordering from him. I also include, you'll see there on the screen, I include my brochure, which is actually about me as a speaker. And so it just tells a little more about me, a bio, that kind of thing. And I like people to know who they're buying from. When I'm buying an item on eBay, if I have the choice, similar, uh, similar item, similar description, similar price, everything's about the same. But if if it's from a person and not a, a huge store, not something like that, I, I just, I love ordering from them more. It's just, I don't know. I just like doing that. And so I feel that, uh, you know, it's made my sales go up because people feel that way about me too, apparently. All right. So let's see, here's the title that popped up from the sellers. Now I'm just going to change this a little bit to, uh, so that it matches mine very well. And so we got military manuals, you got the TM number there, medical surgical technicians. You know what I'm going to add is the date, um, 1950. Actually, I'm going to add us army 1950. And so that way you give a little more information. And if somebody, especially if somebody served during that time, that was, um, I don't know exactly what years Korea, the Korean war was, but I believe that was in 50 to 53, maybe. And so if someone served during that time, especially in the medical field, they might, they'll be more interested in one from that period. Oh, there we go. Collectibles, Korea, 1950 to 1953. <laughs> my public school education held out. Actually, it didn't. I learned that kind of stuff on my own. I don't remember ever talking about the Korean War in public school. All right. Add the condition of your item. It is definitely used. Yep. Condition description. Now, this, normally when I list items, for most of my items, I have a template that I use. And all this is pre-filled. Since I did the sell yours now, uh, option uh, because it's a military manual. I had to do that. What happened there was uh, it didn't pull in my template. So I pulled up my template here so that I could add a few more items. All right. So this is part of the uh, title on my military images template. I've got 68 characters left there. All right. So yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. Let's leave that title as is. And so it's going down, back down to the, and you can fill this stuff in if you want to. It pre-filled a lot of it there for me. The only thing I'm really concerned about here is the item category. And uh, you know what? I'm going to change this item category. And let me tell you why. If the category is in collectibles, military, Korea, all that, what's going to happen is that it's not going to give you the option to uh, to sell it as a at the book rate, and so I'm going to go down here to paper items manuals, and so 
even though it reduces some of the specificity from the category, it allows me to ship it media mail. Um, if you don't, if you don't have it in certain categories, eBay, when you ship it through eBay, you will not be able to use the e media mail. And that's going to save you some money. Um, there's no point in you paying five, ten dollars more on the shipping if you don't have to. And media mail will save you that if you're selling a book. All right. So the uh, let's see where are we going here condition condition all right so anytime i sell something i like to downplay uh the condition uh, unless it is pristine and sealed like a certified uh, sealed comic book or something like that i basically tell people it has been beaten up and possibly chewed on by a bear and uh, just know that, check the pictures well before you buy it. Uh, in the situation with a book like this, uh, it's pulled apart, been you know, unbound, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to tell that in the description. It's been chewed on by a bear, and it's been ripped apart. And so I want to tell everybody what's going on. And so this is the template that I use for military manuals. And so I'm going to copy and paste that, and then I'm going to change the specs. And so basically here, all I do is I go back up, I copy and paste the title. No sense in having to uh, rewrite everything. And that way you can do things a lot quicker. If I wasn't explaining this to you and taking, you know, taking a little more time to do that, um, I could do this pretty quick. I could list this item in just a couple minutes and then move on to the next one. And I'm going to read some of this just so the folks that are listening to the audio version know what is in this template. So what I reposted into the description part of the eBay listing is my original title. I also put in here the item has been used and possibly abused or at least stored poorly. It is sold as is. As is is in capital letters. As is seen in the photos. I cannot guarantee that it's all here. <laughs> um, please feel free to ask any questions. All right, and then I've got just a line, and here's the part where I like to tell a little more story um, to let people realize that it's coming from a person and not just a, a faceless business. And so this is part of my military images, uh, manuals, military collectibles template. Uh, this is a resurrected version of the original publication with a few expanded notes from the author. So what I'm going to do there is actually get rid of that. That's when I republish military books with extra stuff added. All right. Um, it is published here. This All right. So let's change this. Um, you can see where the template comes in. Uh, this. Whoop, there we go. This manual is sold. All right. Go. This manual is sold here as a service of the Military Images Project founded by Dr. David Powers, a third-generation veteran who served in both the Marine Corps and the Army. The goal of the Military Images Project is to preserve military history by making publications, images, and illustrations available by reissuing them at a reasonable cost. I enjoy finding old government guides, manuals, man maps, and rescuing them from dusty attics, garages, and recycle bins. They represent a legacy that could be lost without an effort to preserve them. Not only that, they often represent memories for a lot of us. Some of the guides I publish are created from my own personal copies, such as my green monster that traveled with me through the swamps of Paris Island during boot camp. And uh, let's see, for some reason it's got my name right there. And then it's just got my bio under that about the editor. That's me. Dr. David Powers is an adventurer, philosopher, and pioneer and lives a life of constant experimentation. His life's compass is to seek out adventure in everything he does by being intentional, determined, and unstoppable, and by energizing and outfitting others to embark on their own adventures. He fulfills his purpose through speaking and books and is a best-selling author in psychology and education. He is a decorated veteran of the Marine Corps and a founding member of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. He is the married and the proud father of four feral boys and one princess that he and his wife homeschool. His mission in life is to find the magical best mug of coffee in the world. And that's it. That's uh, my thing. So, like I said, I like to tell a story. You'll see on uh, the next listings I do, which are comic books, that I have a different story I tell. So what I want to do here is I want to insert a, a tighter description of this actual item. And so I'm going to type in here, I'm going to do a couple asterisks and actually I'm going to do three and I'm going to say 
poor condition in capital letters. Poor condition. All right, so here's what I'm going to type. This, let's, uh, this guide has been pulled apart from its binding and is loose leaf. However, all, I'll put all in capital letters, of the pages are here. And uh, let's see. And here's what I want to do. It's in, let me read this again. I was reading it as I was typing. So, poor condition, all caps. This guide has been pulled apart from its binding and is loosely, however, all in capital letters of the pages are here. And so, what I'm going to say, this makes it a, let's see, perfect copy to. You know, typing with these fat fingers of mine, I, and typing with two fat fingers, I, I tend to misspell a lot of stuff and go back on it. One of these days, I may learn how to type. Um, and actually, I'm lying to you when I say that. I'm not going to go back and learn how to type well. All right, this makes it a perfect copy to place in plastic pages and keep in a binder. Binder on your shelf. So you see what I've done there is I've taken the opportunity to, with the asterisks, capital letters, to, excuse me, to really draw their attention to the fact that this copy has uh, is in horrible condition. If you buy this, you need to be sure you look at the pictures and know what the condition is. But, but here's the thing is that even though it's in poor condition, it is absolutely perfect for you to take this, put it inside plastic pages, and put it in a binder on your shelf. And that way, not only that, but you can look through the book and page through it and all that kind of stuff without worrying about damaging it further. And so I'm trying to do a negative positive thing there. And that way, make them realize that, you know what? I do want to store it that way. I do want to protect it that way. This one's better than the other one that's selling that's not been torn apart by a bear. And so that's what I like to do. Um, make them uh, realize they're, they're, you know, getting something awesome there. Buy it now. So what do y'all think I should sell this for? Um, let's go back to that original one. It is selling for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to list mine for 29 99 because I saw some newer ones on there. Let's actually go back and look at those. Um, some of the eBay, the thing about eBay is that, uh, you know, you've got to do some market research. You've got to, uh, you know, see what your uh, what everybody else is selling it for. Because here's the thing: no matter what a collectible is worth, I mean, you could find a price guide that says this book is worth four million dollars, but if people are selling twenty bucks on eBay, it's not really worth four million dollars. It's worth twenty bucks. So you've got to sell it for what the market is doing. And so let's see: there's one that's selling for twenty, one for fifteen. Um, I, I noticed they've got uh, some shipping on there. There's one for fifteen. Oh, there's one for $60, $55, Some of these are newer ones, uh, newer versions of the same book also. And there's only about five of them available. So what I'm going to do, yeah, let's stick with $29.99, but here's what I'm going to do. I like to always allow offers and uh, to automate the offers on eBay. And so the section that says allow offers, uh, do your rock bottom. And what you do is there's a button there. You can see it on the on the video. There's a button there that you can click. Uh, where it will auto accept offers between your rock bottom price and your selling price. And that way I have to approve the offers. I don't have to do anything. If somebody comes in here and says, um, I'd like to offer you $24.99. Well, that's in between my two prices. It will accept the offer automatically. And uh, they think they got a, or they don't think they got a good deal. I sold it for something I'm happy for. And so, you know, everything's good. All right, so let's get down to shipping. I used to do free shipping on everything. I don't do that anymore. Um, what I like to do now is, uh, you know, charge a little bit for shipping. And let's see, I calculate. I don't like doing the calculated. I like doing the flat rate um, because it gives me a little more leeway in the service that I use to ship it. And uh, so let's see, uh, man, I don't like ground advantage either. It's trying to force me into that, isn't it? Yeah, let's see, what's chain service do? Chain service, it's going, there we go, USPS, media mail. And so I'm going to choose that one. And so buyer pays 
463. That's what that's coming up with. So that's good. I'll be happy with that for uh, shipping. So it covers the shipping. I'm not paying any extra. I'll make a little bit of profit on it. And you can see I'm not making a ton of money on this either. And I do charge a little bit more for international shipping just because, I don't know, it's always been a pain in the butt to do international shipping. eBay has made it so much easier and cheaper, but I just hate doing international shipping. Um, there we go. Let's see. And here's another thing I like to do is the ad rate. I like to uh, do the eBay ads. I have a surprising amount of items that sell because of eBay ads. And if you come back over here, basically, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you go to eBay... And uh, let's see, we'll just click on the general eBay page. You see all these things that popped up, picks for you, today's deals, things like that. eBay will run those things at the on the main page. And uh, there we go, keep shopping for. That's stuff I've looked up. Sponsored items based on recent views, things of that nature. It looks like my son's been looking at guitars. Um, my son's a big metalhead and uh, loves looking at guitars on eBay. But if you do the ad... Uh, percent of the ad rate on eBay, it will list your items there and um, probably at least half my items sell because of those ads. And so I always change it though. It suggests 12.1%. I don't want to give up that much profit. I always just put it at three, no matter what the product is. I may have something sometime, someday where, where you know I want to sell it fast. I want eBay to promote it more and I'll do that more, but uh, not today, eBay. So let's see, let's go ahead and list this. All right, so list it for free. I've still got some coupons in there. eBay will give you a certain amount of free listings. You'll still pay a percentage on what it sells for. Um, and they'll subtract that ad fee. Um, you end up doing your shipping through eBay. I mean, it, it everything's done for you. It eats up a lot of the profit, but everything's done for you. You still make a few bucks at the end. And so let's hit list it. If you're watching the video, you'll see what happens next. And... There we go. Your listing is now live. And you see there, I could view the listing, create a new listing, similar listing, or share the listing. And sometimes I like to share those. Let's uh, let's pop on there and see what happens. If I hit share the listing, I think it'll give me the options for Facebook and a couple other social media accounts. And that is taking forever. Oh, there we go. Okay. Share the listing. Please verify yourself. All right. We're going to skip that for now. And uh, I'll share that later. So now we've listed that item. And so we're going to go back. And what we're going to do now is we're going to list a couple comic books. And so let's put this book to the side. And we're going to list a comic book. And now if you're looking at the video, we're going to list this Conan issue. It's a newer Conan issue from Dark Horse Comics, number 15. And what year is this? I paid a dollar for this at a flea market. It's 2005. Now it's a it's what would be considered a very common comic book, just very common. And so I tend to list common comic books at $9.99. I'll usually do a best offer at $4.99. And so it'll sell somewhere between $4.99 and $9.99. I make my money, I make a few bucks. I list a lot of comic books this way. Uh, most of my listings are comic books or cards. Um, just because that's my area of expertise. And, and here's the thing: um, I bought this for a dollar at the flea market. So you'd think to yourself, well, this comic's only worth two or three dollars. Why would somebody pay nine ninety nine for it? Well, the thing is, if you have trouble finding it and you want to complete a collection, you're going to pay whatever it's worth to you. And uh, you know, for a, a common comic book that's not worth anything for any other reason, it you know, it sometimes go for that. Um, sometimes they'll go lower, but you know, I've got my rock bottom price anyway, so that it all works out. It all works out. All right, so comic books. Now you get to see one of my templates in action. So I click on the comic book template. Get some more coffee here. Ah, oh, there you can see my brochure and my that article about me is already pre-filled on this template. So we're going to add the comic book photos. And what I do with comic books is I don't take many pictures unless there's a reason to like if there's a if it's a an issue that's worth a lot and there's some damage to it that kind of thing um, or if there's significant damage to it that i want to point out there isn't to this one it's just it's a regular comic store copy it looks like it's been read a few times all right so since i added these pictures they show up at the bottom you just drag them over and uh, that way you can make it your primary you want your item pictures to appear first and then the things that tell the story about you you want that to appear last because you're trying to sell a product in addition to the story all right so item title let's go with conan 
Dark Horse Comics. And 2005. Wait, did I do an extra space there? I did. Had an extra space there. 2005. And is there anything special about this that... You know what? Uh, let's add let's add one more thing. Um, at the end, we're going to add young Conan because there aren't many stories about young Conan. It's usually all stories about him and the ladies he's romancing and people he's killing. And uh, this is kind of the same thing, but he's young. <laughs> all right. And you'll see there in that title. Um, so let me read it for you. Conan, Dark Horse Comics. Oh, and you know what? It would be a smart idea to list the issue number. You know, let's don't do a pound sign because that uh, could be misconstrued as something else because of hashtags and all that. All right. Conan, 15, Dark Horse Comics, 2005, with a COA Powers Collection, Young Conan. And so the COA Powers Collection, let me explain that to you. Um, in the industry, I've actually gotten quite a reputation because of my humongous collection and the comics I sell. And so what I do is I actually, when I sell comics online, I actually include a certificate of authenticity that it is, in fact, from the Powers Collection. And so for some people, that may increase the value. Uh, people tend to really like it, though. It adds a little something to add to their comic book collection. And so I've found that it... Uh, it helps me sell more. And so that's pretty cool. All right. So it's given me some options here. Might as well list that too. All right. So books and magazines. So like I said, I don't list comic books in the comic book section. I list it in books and magazines. And you might think to yourself, well, Dave, how's a Conan comic going to sell when it's buried in all those books and magazines? Well, the thing is, the category doesn't really matter that much. Most people buy on eBay based on them searching for a particular item. So no matter what category mine's listed in, if somebody's searching for Conan issue number 15, it's going to pull it up. And so that makes it easy for me. Now, some of these are required. And so what I like to do is uh, for author Robert E. Howard is the creator of Conan. So I'm going to put that there. Book title. Uh, let's just enter in Conan. And then you have to click on it even after you type it. And so that was required. So I had to do that part. Uh, we come on down. I don't fill out any of this stuff. You can fill all this out if you want to, but it's specifics that I have found do not increase uh, the the comic selling. They just don't help. And so let's go. Like I said, I always devalue uh, the condition of the comic or anything I sell. I devalue. And so I'm going to list it as good. Definitely not very good or near mint, nothing like that. And so condition description, I'm going to just put... I'm not going to put anything in there. It's down here below. All right, so I had copied my title already, so I'm going to repost that. And what I like to do when I come down here is uh, just to make it look a little better, I like to separate some of this out and just uh, make it look a little, uh, little more robust. So we get to this part of my comic book template. And I'll tell you what, if anybody's seeing this, uh, or listening to the podcast and wants a copy of my template for comic books, I'd be more than happy to send that to you. Just, uh, you know, DM me, send me an email, something like that, and uh, give me your email and I'll send you this uh, this template. And so, you know, of course, you'll have to change some of it because it doesn't apply to you. So let me go ahead and read it for the folks that are on the audio edition. So under my description I put in there, I've also got a thing on here about condition, and it does say best guess. Um, I actually created my own comic book condition guide uh, because I don't want people saying, hey, Dave said it was near mint and it's not near mint. No, Dave doesn't use the word near mint. Dave uses some other stuff that is nowhere near that, but it gives a much, um, a much more fun idea of the condition of the comic. So let me read this to you. I'll read it in my movie trailer voice. Once upon a time. No, I won't do that. I can't carry that on for too long. Once upon a time, there was a young man who was gifted his first comics from his dad, as many such young men are. They consisted of cowboy and war comics and a few old Turoks. The young boy was hooked. His collection expanded in leaps and bounds over the years until it filled a room. When the young man went off to college, he sold the collection curated since childhood to pay for undergraduate work. But he would not be out of the game forever. He slowly began, began building another collection that finally, because of a single large purchase on the other side of the country, became known as the largest private collection east of the Mississippi River. 
Then he sold it as well to pay for the laundry list of expenses associated with having five kids. Very little is left of the Lincoln collection. The comic for sale here is one of the few issues remaining. And that's what my collection is known as. Uh, you know, The David Powers collection is officially known as the Lincoln collection because I bought it from Lincoln Powers. Um, actually, one of my cousins. Um, let's see. All comics sold here are personally personally curated from the original Lincoln Powers collection. There aren't many left, as most of the collection has already been sold to other collectors. Each comic comes with a certificate of authenticity as proof that it was originally part of the Powers collection. All my comics are sold as is. I'm not a professional grader, and this is not a store. These are from my personal collection. It's a smoke and pet-free home. Lots of kids, but I kept them away from the comics. Seriously, I don't let my kids touch my comics. Here's my personal grading system, and I'm actually pretty proud of this. Um, I think this helps with sales as well. Um, you may not want to do this, depending on what you're selling and how you're selling it, especially collectibles. Um, you may want to use an official grading system. All right, so in most grading systems, uh, especially comics, uh, you've got uh, Mint, Near Mint. Uh, some, some systems will have like, new, very good, good, acceptable, poor, things like that. So here's my system. Number one is darn near perfect. And I very, very seldom rate something as darn near perfect. All right, so here's what darn near perfect. Uh, I won't read the entire thing. Uh, like I said, if you want to get a copy of this, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Um, just be sure to credit me with this. It's called the Dr. Redbeard Collectibles Grading System. Uh, so darn near perfect means this is close to mint with some minor defects. I won't go through the list of defects. Uh, you can send that, but it would take me forever to read it. All right, number two, the next one. <clears throat> Less than perfect, but still pretty awesome. All right, so this book is an excellent copy with great eye appeal. And then we move down to number three. Number three is do not feel bad cracking this one open to read it. This book could, could have one major defect, like a large piece out of the cover, a long tear, or a detached centerfold. And so in other words, in comic collectibles, a lot of times what people will do is they'll buy a comic or, or, you know, they want a comic. They want a comic for the collection. And so what they'll do is they'll first they'll end up buying a poor condition one because they want to get their hands on it. They want to be able to put it on the wall. They want to be able to put it in the box to fill a spot. And so they'll buy poor condition really cheap. And that way also they don't feel bad opening it up and touching it without the white gloves on, that kind of thing. And that's number three. It's a good placeholder copy for your collection. And so that's that. Well, number four, though, it gets worse. Number four um, is kind of the same thing, to be perfectly honest with you, except it's just a lower rating. Um, number four is called an okay placeholder until you find a better copy you can afford. And that's what happens. Collectors will buy a cheap one and then they'll move up eventually. All right. And number five, this is my favorite one. Number five is possibly attacked by a bear. It just means that, hey, um, this comic is in absolutely horrible shape. It's here, or at least most of it's here. Um, and, and, you know, you're going to buy it really cheap and you're going to get a good deal on it because it's been attacked by a bear. But you know what? I've got one better. Number six. Number six is well-lived and deserving of a good death. It has major defects to the point that there is almost no collector value. In other words, if I found a comic, let's say all that's there is the cover of it. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um, that might be valuable. I might be able to sell that for, you know, for if you imagine the first appearance of Superman, but just the cover, I could still sell that for a ton of money, but it would definitely be a number six. And that's my comic book grading system. And so now that's in my description. I'm not sure how many people read all, that thing all the way through, but what I do now is I have to pick which one of these fits this comic. And uh, you can tell me in the comments if you want to, if you think I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with number two. Uh, less than perfect, but still pretty awesome. Let me just look at it again. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, less than perfect, but still pretty awesome. And so I'm going to copy that. And so just in case people don't read all the way down through here, I do want them to know which one I graded it as. But you know, in the description that I read to you, you remember that I told them, I am not a professional grader. This is not a comic book store. This is just my system. And so I insert that near the top of the description and we're going to go on down, and I always do buy it now, almost always. I mean, very seldom am I going to do anything but buy it now. So let's see, 999 
And like I said, the minimum offer I'm going to take is $4.99. And uh, like I said, I don't make a ton of money on these, but I do have some high dollar items for sale on eBay. And so listing a few of these smaller things every now and then helps me sell the bigger things. And so it all helps out. Now, on this template, um, it's already preset to economy shipping. Basically, I'm going to ship it as cheap as I can. It's going to get to you at some point. Um, buyer pays $1.99. It costs more than that to ship it, but I'm, I'm wanting to make it look uh, inexpensive. And so, you know, somebody else is going to be selling it with, uh, you know, I don't know, five bucks for shipping, that kind of thing. And, okay, yeah, this is still preset where international is going for $150. let us go for just 50 for international, like I said, I don't like shipping international. I, I used to not mind. I used to think it was cool sending stuff to other countries and all that, but I just don't care now. Um, I sell enough here in the U.S. that it's not a big deal for me. Depending on what you sell, though, that could be a big seller for you. All right, so they're suggesting 10.7 for the ad rate on this. And if you remember from the other item, I do everything at three. And let's go on down. We're ready to list it. List it for free. Good. That means I've still got some coupons left. And we're going to list it. There we go. Put it to the side, wait on it to load. The listing is now live. And that's done. And so what I want to do, I don't want to do, oh, you know, I should have just clicked on the create new listing. But uh, let's go over to right here, create listing. And we're going to list the next item. This one is a Kazar issue. Now, this one, yet again, another very common issue, not worth very much. But I'm going to tell you a couple of things I do to help uh, play these up a little bit, and my internet's running so slow right now. Um, if you've listened to some of the other podcasts, you know that I live kind of off-grid. Uh, there is zero broadband internet where I live, and so it's all uh, cellular and satellite internet. Sometimes it runs incredibly slow, especially I'm recording this in the uh, late afternoon, evening time, and so a lot of people are getting home getting on the internet it kills my bandwidth and so there we go okay so now let's pull up the comic book template all right if you're still with us i'm glad you're here and uh you know if you have any questions feel free to throw that in the comments and uh you know as i see those pop up from time to time i will jump in and answer those you can also dm me anytime you want and uh, answer what i can and there we go. There's my two pictures. This one actually had a fold-out cover. That's kind of kind of cool. Um, this was not a good period in comics for Marvel, though. I, I just I recognize from the art, uh, 1998. Yeah, very. I don't know. It just wasn't a good period of time for Marvel. I don't think hardly anything significant happened in the comic books during that time. Uh, most of the comic books from that time are fairly worthless, and uh, the stories weren't that good either. But this one I actually like. I like Kazar. Uh, I've always been a Kazar fan. Anything Kazar, Tarzan, things like that. I've always been kind of a big fan. All right, so Kazar, and I almost forgot last time to list that issue number. Um, so let's you know do that first. Marvel Comics. Man, ah, I've already forgotten what year I told you guys. 1998, 1998. All right, now here's the thing that I'm going to use to try to upsell this one a little bit, or at least make people want it more, is that uh, this one has Thanos in it. Uh, there's, I'm looking at nothing else significant other than Thanos, but Thanos in a Kazar comic, um, you know, Thanos has already been pretty cool um, in the comics and a really heavy hitter, but after the Avengers movies, uh, pretty much anything with Thanos uh, got more popular. There were a lot of new Thanos fans that came out, Team Thanos, with the snap and uh you know so if i mentioned thanos is in this in a kazar comic of all places uh people might be more likely to buy it and so let's put thanos appearance thanos appearance with an exclamation mark that means everything's more awesome right all right and so click those two things categories books and magazines all right, the author, usually with Marvel Comics, what I do is, unless it's a prominent uh, writer or artist that helped with the comic, I put Stan Lee for everything, every single thing Marvel. Uh, let's put Kazar in there, click on it, and scan on down. Oh, you know what? I forgot to copy and paste the title. And so let's copy and paste that so we can drop it down here in the description. Uh, go down, down, down. Oh. We want to change the condition because it is not brand new. Change that to good. 
copy and paste the title in there. And then uh, let's, you know, spread the title out. There we go. Thanos appearance. And so I went through a lot of this on the last part with you. So I'm going to go on down. I'm going to do the same grade on this one as well. That uh, less than perfect, but still pretty awesome. And because this is a great buy from a, for a 1998 free movie Thanos appearance, I think it's a pretty good buy. And so, you know, we're going to do it there and then do it at the same price as the other one. This one will probably actually sell pretty quick because Thanos is, like I said, he really went up in uh, prominence after the movies. 999, and then we're going to go 499. And all these comics I bought for a dollar at a flea market when I added them to the, the Lincoln collection. That's kind of just the going flea market price for the most part, a dollar a comic. If you're paying more than a dollar per comic at the flea market, it better be worth something. Otherwise, you're overpaying. Most of the time at the flea market, I mean, the days are pretty much gone with the advent of the internet and eBay and all that. The days are gone when you're going to find a truly expensive, um, valuable comic at a garage sale or a flea market and be able to snatch it up. That's just not going to happen. And so, you know, a dollar is pretty much what you're going to pay. I buy a lot of these just to read. And after I read them, I'll resell them, that kind of thing. All right, create new listing. And so we're going to do our last item uh, for this experience that you're sitting here with me on. And so, like I said before, I am a small eBay lister. So if you're wanting to be one of those and maybe start doing it yourself, list a few items here and there, and you're not selling a ton of stuff or not opening a store or anything like that, that's what I do. Um, I've got friends that do otherwise that list high volume things that use shipping centers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I can point you to them, but that's not me. All right. So this one is the ultimates to issue number two by Mark Millar. This guy, Mark Millar is, he has put out some amazing stuff over the years. Okay. I only took one picture of this one, just the cover. Um, but, uh, yeah, Mark Millar has had some amazing storylines over the years, some amazing comics of his own creation, in addition to his work at Marvel and other places. I love his writing. And so this is the Ultimates 2. And so, to Marvel. I'm not going to put Marvel Comics in that one, just Marvel, because I think I'm going to end up listing extra information here. All right, so 2005. I'm going to do Mark Millar. And I also want to mention just a couple of the people that are in this one. We've got uh, Captain Britain. Nobody really. I may mention Captain Britain lower down, but, uh, you know, we've got uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., Thor. Uh, let's see who else is in this. Uh, yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D., Thor, Nick Fury. Let's listen with that. Thor, Nick Fury, there we go. Oh, ran out of character, so let's stop at Thor. Okay, so, and then also, guys, remember, I wanted to copy that before I go down in uh, publication here. I just went and checked that, but I doubt that's going to help with anything. Books and magazines, author. Now here, instead of Stan Lee, I'm going to put Mark Millar because that's probably going to catch some people that are collecting Mark Millar's work. Now here, instead of Ultimates, I'm going to put the Avengers. They are the prominent team in this book, so I'm going to go ahead and put the Avengers. And you never know when that might pick somebody up, but it's required. Had to put something. And so, uh, man, if this was live, I would have you guys help me fill this out by telling me what would go next instead of me just auto-filling all this. All right, so remember when I get to the thing here, I just copy and paste the title. Um, oh, you know what? I messed up. I skipped. Yeah, this is Ultimates 2, Issue 2. Yeah, so we need to go back up and change that. I just realized, because there is more than one Ultimates edition, so I'm going to get rid of Marvel, because any collector is going to know that it's Marvel. Let's do a lowercase number 2, 2005. Okay, see, that works. That works for me, and I guess it works for you, too. All right. Written by. So now that we're in the description, I have more characters I can use. And so I space this out a little bit. Featuring Shield and the Avengers. And so I'm going to play this up a little bit versus 
Thor, because it's actually a good fight with Thor in a bar um, in this comic. And so, like the others, I'm going to do this one as less than perfect, but still pretty awesome. A grade number two. Um, because it is it's certainly not a grade number one. It's you know, it's a pre-read copy. Basically, basically, if your copy's been touched or read, it's it downgrades it. Uh, it's never gonna be mint, near mint, that kind of thing once that's happened. All right, so 999, let's go for 99 again. And that yeah, that pops up. Okay, 499, and then we go down, down, down. Shipping looks good. I know all this is pre-filled on a template. Sometimes, though, I still like to uh, watch it as it scans by just to make something, make sure something wonky hasn't happened in the formatting. Or every now and then, eBay will change something, and it might have changed one of my settings. And so we're going down and we'll list it. All right. I want to thank you for joining me today. We've, we've listed uh, – Three comics and that book. And so we've listed four items on eBay in a short amount of time. Now, it may seem like it took a long time, but the thing is, I, I would have gone a lot faster. I mean, this would have been under 15 minutes probably if I was just doing it on my own. And that's four items. Like I say, it's not a lot of money. Uh, if you're trading time for value, this doesn't pan out. This doesn't work. I mean, you could have your kids list it. That might work better if you're doing this kind of thing. But here's the thing. I do have a lot of other items in my store that, uh, and I'll put the link below if you want to just pull up my store and look at some of my items. And matter of fact, if you want to copy my template um, and don't want to message me or anything, you could just pop onto one of my items and go down to the description and copy and paste that. Uh, modified, of course. You don't want Dr. Dave stuff in your descriptions. Um, but uh, you're, you're welcome to it. But uh, you know, this would have taken me real quick, but it helps sell my other items that are on eBay that are worth a lot more and selling for a lot more. So money-wise, it, it does pan out. Um, I try I try my best. It's hard because it's ingrained in us from day one as, uh, as factory workers growing up in the public school system because that's what you're trained for in public school is factory work. And you always equate time with money. In other words, how much do I get paid per hour? Here's the thing. If I was looking at this in pay per hour, let's say I took an hour to take the photos because I've done that before we logged on here, uh, you know, to do the photos, to take the pictures, uh, upload those, do the listings. Let's just say one hour. And so let's if I sold all this stuff, I might profit 30, 40 bucks, uh, 30, 40 bucks in an hour. That's that's not a lot of money unless I'm doing that hour after hour, day after day. That is not a lot of money. And the last thing I want to do is to be sitting here for eight hours a day listing eBay stuff. That's not what I want to do. So I try to never equate time with money. The thing is, I've done some things where um, like my UGC gigs, I get paid. Uh, sometimes I get paid 200 bucks for something that takes five minutes. That's pretty good money for an hour. I mean, co compute that out. Five minutes for 200 bucks, that's not bad. I've done speaking gigs where I got paid $5,000 for an hour. And so that's pretty good too. And that's why I'm in, you know, in my job or in hopefully in yours too, if you're engaging in multiple streams of income, it makes it harder to uh, do the time versus money thing. And so I want you to break away from that mindset. It's hard. Like I said, I still think about it that way. Um, I still look at people and I'm kind of thinking, I wonder what they get paid per hour. And, and it's just, it's not the way we should be thinking. Um, you're not going to get rich getting paid by the hour. You're going to get rich getting paid for the value that you bring to other people. Um, with this, um, I'm getting paid. I'll get paid a little bit to help somebody complement their comic book collection. And that makes me happy because I'm a huge comic book nerd myself. And it makes me happy to know that I helped somebody complete a collection and I made a few bucks in the process. But, you know, like I said, this is not my mainstream of income. It just helps supplement some of the others. And it's kind of fun, too. There are going to be some streams of income that you engage in that uh, you just call it a, uh, you know, it's something you love. It's a passion. Uh, and you make a little bit of money, but it's not going to make you a full-time living. It's not going to let you quit your W-2 job, but you do it because it's fun. And everybody needs some things like that just to help keep life a little more interesting and a little more exciting. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope you You'll join us next time with the Streams of Income podcast, and my name is Dr. David Powers.